Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're talking about five little tricks that we use to catch bass all through the winter. We talk a lot about how much we love winter bass fishing, but I know that there are still guys out there struggling. You might be one of them. If you've been out there trying to catch fish and it's just not happening, I get it. We've got a few more tricks that we use. Now, a couple of these we've talked about recently, a couple of these we haven't talked about for a very long time. But there are five different things that I do when the going really gets tough. Either the water has gotten super, super cold, maybe we had a storm come through, that water got muddy, or maybe it's a bluebird day and the fish just don't seem to be eating the baits. There are five different things that we turn to that we rely on to keep those fish biting. These are in no particular order, but these are just five tricks that we use. The first one has to do with a Ned Rig. You guys know how much we like throwing Ned Rigs in the wintertime. It's just one of those confidence baits. For me in particular, it is my last ditch effort. If I realize today is just not the day, it's not happening, I can't catch them, what am I gonna do? What's my panic button? That main thing that you're gonna see me grab is a Ned Rig. Now, we talk a lot about throwing purple this time of year, and that's half of it. Uh, I throw purple a lot in the wintertime. You're going to see that in my jigs, too. There's just something about that bright, bold purple color that just gets fish to go in cold water. It's a, it is literally my personal confidence. So I'm just sharing that with you guys and have been doing that for a little while now because uh, I know sometimes there are just tough days. But if the water starts to get some stain to it, it gets a little murky, maybe a couple storms happen, it starts muddying up. Another trick that we use is that chartreuse head. Again, we've talked about that a little bit this winter, but I want to emphasize when that Ned Rig is sitting down there dead on the bottom doing nothing, that can be really hard for those fish to find in the cold water. But if you're moving it, well, now it's moving too fast and they won't eat that. It's a very difficult balance. But going to that chartreuse head, letting that sit on the bottom, oftentimes that's enough to get those fish to pick that thing up. So I love to throw that purple, but if I start to get some stain, I love to throw that purple with that chartreuse. Now, one other thing, this is that Ned Locks EWG hook. I wanna to talk directly to the bank angler. We are not leaving you out of this one. I think the bank angler struggles with a lot of wintertime techniques because uh, you have no ability to get out over the water and get your baits back when they get snagged. That EWG style Ned hook should be in your lineup. Uh, I've really built a lot of confidence this past fall and winter. I really like that head. I had overlooked it previously, but that's going to allow you standing on shore or a guy in a boat, either one, to fish that Ned Rig in way more places, right? If your fish are sitting on the end of a, a lay down tree or they're in a brush pile or they're on a really rocky bottom with that EWG, with that hook text posed, tucked in there, you can fish that in and through all of that nasty cover. And that flat out will help you catch more fish because you're not afraid to throw it in places where that exposed hook is going to get stuck. Uh, the second hack, you know what, Let's. this is a simple one. This is just about a bait that works. I love to throw that Ned Rig. Tim loves to throw a drop shot. Those are, for each of us, those are those like last ditch confidence things, except I have one more. When all else fails, I do go to a tube. A tube is a wintertime fish catcher. It, it gives that same craw profile, but you can fish it aggressively when the water's warmer, but come middle of winter, you can just dead stick that thing. It lays dead flat on bottom. It's all about profile. I throw the four inch more in the wintertime, but I'll tell you what, when things really get cold, when that water temp gets way, way down there. 
We're talking water in the high 30s, up to 40. Go into that even smaller tube, a little two and a half inch tube. I'm able to drop that down to my lightest line, five or six pound line, throw that thing out there and, and literally just let it sit there. Typically, I'm only going to do this if I've already caught fish there previously. So I know that there are fish around because we're not covering water with this. We are soaking it on some fish, but I'll just move it every once in a while. That is the slowest that I fish any bait. Just barely touch that tube. And on the worst of days, the most bluebird conditions, the times where they just will not go, you'll be amazed. You know, it's been 30 seconds. You've only moved it a couple times. You give it a little bump and dunk. There's that fish that you knew was there. It just catches them. Uh, and I'll link all this stuff in the video description for you guys, uh, along with some great uh, budget rods to throw some of these different techniques as well. Uh, the third one, let's talk about an A-Rig real quick. We're not specifically talking about an A-Rig. We're talking about how to adapt any A-Rig, okay? It's about the baits. I fish a lot of baits, like a Kitek Fat Swing Impact, a lot of big, wide movement. I fish those in the spring and in the fall, but the farther we get into the coldest water of the year, the more you need to pay attention to how your bait is moving. You want your swim baits to have super tight, super subtle action in truly cold water. If the A-Rig has stopped working for you, it is almost guaranteed because your baits have too much movement or you have to go too fast to keep them moving. Because as the water gets colder, plastics get stiffer. A lot of swim baits will get really rigid and you have to go faster to keep them kicking. If you can find a bait, like this is a G-Rat Thin Swim. This is one that I've been playing with a ton this winter. Uh, and actually these Kitex are a great option as well. I use them as my dummy baits with those G-Rats below them. But these are also a great bait, the Easy Shiner. These are baits that have super tight action, tiny little bit of roll, small tail kick back there vibrating, but it's not this exaggerated thing. They shine, it's a downsized profile all the way around. They shine in that really, really cold water. You can get that swim bait to keep working, even in that coldest water, you can get that A-Rig to keep working if you adjust the baits themselves to very subtle baits that will continue to swim in that cold water. Next one, this is a fun one. So you guys know how much we love throwing football jigs in the wintertime. We love jig fishing. I catch a lot of our best fish of the winter on a jig. This is a trick that I've only shown a couple of times through the years, and it's about adding chartreuse. So much like that chartreuse head on the Ned Rig. If you've been a fan of Tactical for a long time, you've seen me do this. If you're new, you have no idea what's coming. This is a five inch Yamamoto double tail grub. For now, I'm gonna peel that off there. And I'm gonna cut, do I have scissors around here? Good. I'm gonna cut a chunk of that grub off, okay? About like that. Now, for what I'm about to show you, Somebody is instantly going to ask, can't I just dip my trailer in chartreuse? And you absolutely can. The reason that I don't is that dipping a natural colored trailer like a green pumpkin uh, will never be as bold as what I'm doing. And I like that bright, bold color. The next trick is to get some Senkos. Any chartreuse Senko. I do not care what variation. Uh, and you notice how old these bags are. That's because every time I'm in some old tackle shop somewhere and I see some ancient chartreuse Senkos on the shelf, I buy them for this very purpose. In the winter, this really works. This will work in clear water with both spots and smallmouth. But as soon as that water gets muddy, this gets muddy. This is a large mouth killer. So I take that Senko. Let's cut that guy open. I'm just gonna take a segment of that bright chartreuse Senko. Now in this case, the whole Senko isn't chartreuse. If I had one that was all chartreuse, it wouldn't matter which way I turned it. But I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna thread it on and I'm gonna make sure that that chartreuse section faces up. 
Then I take my cut down trailer and I put that right back on there. So it's that same profile. Now you can glue those together if you really wanna get it to stay, but that's that same profile, same everything, except I've added that chartreuse core. Now sitting here in my hand, I can hardly see it. But you have to remember when that jig is on the bottom, it'll open up. All these little tentacles, all the little strands of the skirt will open and there's that chartreuse blob sitting there right in the center of that jig. And when that water is a little murky, in some lakes, that water gets murky. You can go to like a black blue jig, a really dark profile, you can get them to eat it. But in a lot of highland reservoirs, they won't touch that stuff. They still want a naturally colored jig, even when that water's muddy. I don't know why, it's just one of those things. But I found if I add that chartreuse core, my bites go way, way up. And it's really interesting. I think it's because I put it in the middle, because obviously you could dip your tail chartreuse, but I just seem to have more issues with fish biting those tails off of that jig. When I put it in the core, they eat that jig like they mean it. Just dong, they choke that jig. So murky conditions, if you're largemouth, murky conditions. If it's spots in smallmouth, you can even try it in the clear water. But adding that chartreuse accent to any jig is a great wintertime hack to keep catching fish. And then last but not least, number five is the Damiki rig. Again, nothing special here, except I wanna talk very specifically about application because this can even be adapted to the shore guy. Now shore guy, you have to understand you're going to lose a few. It's an exposed head on the bottom, but it wants to stay upright. So it's not like it's gonna be tipped over and dragging on bottom, snagging everything. It wants to stay up. The Damiki rig is typically fished on 2D sonar or now that a lot of people have live fished on live but it does not have to be. So here's a trick for you. If you're fishing this thing on electronics, you can kind of shake it up over the top of fish and then you just sit there and you wait for the fish to come up and get it. Like totally dead in the water, it's a trip. But if you're fishing it blind, I have found that we're essentially bottom strolling with it, uh, but we're doing it unbelievably subtly. So I'll throw this thing out, let it go to bottom, and you give it the most minor shake you've ever given anything. I mean, you're barely touching it, almost on slack line, and then just slowly moving it back to the boat or back to the shore. If you know that there are fish around, if you caught fish there yesterday, if you've had some short strikes there already, you know fish are around, there's something about that profile, and when you barely move it, that tail is back there shaking. It, you would not think so, but it is. And it's, it's almost completely dead action, but I find that I can catch fish on it that just don't eat the other profiles for whatever reason. Uh, it just shines super cold water. And again, most people who use a Damiki rig, they're looking at electronics, but that is not a requirement you can fish this thing blind, throw it out, let it go to bottom and just barely shake. And we're not doing the dead stick thing when we're standing on the shore because you don't know where the fish are. Cover water, but barely move that bait, barely get that thing shaken and just slowly work it back across the bottom. If it starts to feel like that nose has dug in and caught a little muck, give it two hard pops. That'll usually break it free from the junk on the bottom, grass, leaves, and then start again. But that is definitely overlooked in a lot of situations. Those are five different tricks that we use. All of them are incredibly effective. And if you're, if you're out there winter fishing, it's not going the way you want, you're riding that struggle bus, one of these might be the ticket that you needed to get back to whaling on those fish. I'll link all this stuff in the video description, the different components that we use uh, for the modifications, and again, some budget gear to fish them effectively. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.